Malkelson, what stands out for you as an individual? You've been around this for many, many years now. What Does something stand out for you? Absolutely, Dale. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, Scarborough Rouge River has a high population of young people, young people that will be entering university in the coming years. And I think our platform with the significant tuition fee reduction will make a big difference to the families in my riding uh, because the income level fits right into the policy that the Liberal Party has put in place. Secondly, we also have a very high population of seniors, seniors who have come to Canada and require a lot of services. So in our platform, all the services for the seniors uh, when it comes to health care, uh, regular social services will certainly make a difference in their daily life. So I, I'm very proud that our party has really looked at the issues and they have presented a platform and a go forward. Okay, basis. well don't go through the whole platform. I just wanted to know what was most important and uppermost in your mind. Yeah. Nathan Chan, what about you? Well, affordability, a change that brings affordability. 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 Okay. People are finding it more and more difficult uh, to make ends meet. We are promising to take HST off home heating hydro um, in fact, promising to have a tuition fees freeze. It's okay to have tuition freeze uh, fee related platform, but if you increase it by so much and make it the highest undergrad tuition fees in Canada and then try to uh, address the uh, reduce and not promising a freeze, it's not, it's not going to start it. TTC fair freeze. We are actually talking about issues, uh, the, the cost that everyday families face and, and Ontario NDP is promising to bring affordability to families so they could actually spend more time with their kids more money for, for their <laughs> basic necessities, making sure that they have a proper uh, life that's balanced and that, uh, that okay. has, right. and so affordability would be the key. Affordability issue. problems in a lot of uh, ridings right here in the city of Toronto, of course, is, is the unemployment level. It's too high, everybody knows that. What are you going to do in particular, uh, Nathan? Let me ask you. Well, our party to help solve some of those problems. Our party has actually uh, promised to support businesses and corporations that create jobs, new jobs, not existing jobs. When they create a new job, they get a credit up to five thousand dollars, and up to uh, you know uh, for a new job with a, with a in 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 job training, and that is actually a way to promote additional uh, jobs and to also save the jobs that have been. Uh, going out through, uh, you know, sh being shipped out. Manufacturing jobs have decided, disappeared and Ontario NDP is promising to have a buy Ontario policy through which the government um, will try the maximum to get local products, uh, local, um, local vendors and local um, employers and corporations to provide the services for what we need. And in a, in a case, only in exception of a case where there's unlimited, uh, uh, under, sub, under the amount of supply is not enough or the, or the product cannot be received here, we would go out. Otherwise, buy Ontario policy would create a lot of jobs here because one of the reasons we are lo losing jobs, we lost 300,000 jobs in the manufacturing field because we are allowing companies to ship uh, jobs outside. We are actually, the current government, McKinsey government has been making deals with uh, companies outside Canada and shipping jobs as well. So that should stop and our, our policy to give tax credit to employers to create a job will definitely benefit young people, immigrants, and everybody who's looking for a job. Then what are some of your ideas? Well, Dale, if you really look at the, some of the manufacturing jobs that have left Canada, uh, the opportunities of them coming back is very slim because we're looking at they're going to labor markets where labor cost is very cheap. But if you look at uh, our economic plan, you will see that our, our province in the uh, implementation of the Green Energy Act our research and innovation ministry, uh, the funds we put into the Mars Center, that we have recovered from the, the current recession to the tune of 260,000 jobs that we lost. We've recovered all of it. We've recovered an additional 21,000. And our Green Energy Act will create another 30,000 jobs to come. We are Last also, candidate said 60,000. Why are these numbers different? No, it's 60, 50,000 in total for the Green Energy Act. So we, we've oh. already... We've okay. already created some and we will have another 30. Those are big numbers. They're big numbers and they're happening already. But what you've got to look at is the Liberal Party, uh, their tax reform package has made a big difference to businesses. They no longer have to file two income tax every year. So they have saved on that. It, we've also reduced business tax already and we're planning on reducing it again uh, in the coming years. So these reductions will help business to invest. And when they invest, they'll create new employment. We're also working with business to give them the opportunity to compete globally better. And as you do that, you will create job opportunities here. But our investment 
is really in the universities which are going to bring us those innovative products and manufacturing and, and, and jobs in the future. So you cannot just look at today, you have to look at what the Liberal Party has been Unless doing. you're unemployed, then you look at today. Well, if you're unemployed, we have yeah. created the Second Career Program, we've created Employment Ontario to help people to look at the new industries that are being created and get an opportunity into that new okay. world because the world has changed. George Singh, what about jobs? Hello, uh, my question is, what are your plans for unemployed graduate post-secondary students that are carrying a heavy debt, um, a 5.1 percent tuition rates have increased, while uh, the consumer price index has not even risen about 1 percent? Um, and there is a blatant disregard for provincial acts such as the Ontario of College and Arts and Technology Act and the Educational Act. A uh, typical example, as I choose myself, I have a professional degree from Europe, I completed four postgraduate certificate programs in Canada, and I've completed my MBA. I'm, now I'm starting my second master's. I have never been called for an interview by an employer. So what are your plans of action for these graduate people who've completed post-secondary education, who have so much qualifications, but they can never get themselves a job? Well, Dale, I, I guess you have to look at that. Uh Previous to our government, there has been no investment in innovation and research. Uh, we have built the Mars Center. We have contributed to research and innovation in that center. Uh, it is uh, going to create new businesses in the future in, in the new technology world and in that advanced technology world. So our goal is we are going to be creating jobs in the future so people like Mary will have an opportunity in the future. If, if I could say, if you look at what we were doing in the past, it was a standstill because our universities were not growing. We did not have enough scientists at our universities. We're now bringing those people in. We're looking for highly qualified people that will help us to create and innovate products in Ontario. Well, as grads, they're out there and they can't find work. You know that. A lot of people know that. Maybe people out there, our parents with those graduate students, having graduated, they're still living at home, they can't find, they can't get their career launched. But, but we are in a, in a three-year recession that we're just getting out of. And, and I would say to you that the path to the future is, is, is very bright. It's looking good. Nathan Chen, what are your ideas? Well, we've been, I've been knocking thousands of doors, and this is a consistent problem that people have been telling me. That, that particular that, problem, that particular college problem. grads, no job. No jobs. Yeah. A lot of, lot of education, no jobs. And we, we find a way to tell them that this many jobs have been created, this many jobs have been created, but it's so mostly temporary jobs or casual jobs or jobs that are that they're uh, they're being underemployed just like you know if you're qualified as a teacher why should be you be doing an after school program part time every day evening we have qualified people with high amount of debt were waiting for jobs and we have been cutting nurse jobs we have been cutting uh, so many jobs in in public sector as well as in the private sector the job creation model for us with with respect to $5000 credit uh, to employers to start a new job, create a new job, applies to newcomers who have internationally trained professional credentials, but also applies to local people who have actually, um, you know, it's been educated here and have. Uh, have but how many of those five thousand uh, dollar subsidies are available? Well, up what to, are you uh, saying? Uh, our plan is to create at least eighty thousand jobs <clears throat> over a term with that kind of a program. With that, with that kind of a program and twenty thousand a year. And more importantly, again, I want to go back to. Uh, this is almost like a double impact for students because they're not finding the job, but also their tuition fees have been one of the, the quest, part of the question was incredible amount of debt. They're still carrying debt. It's getting, yeah. so, so it's important for us to freeze the tuition fees for the next four years. The first two years, liberals did freeze it, but the next six years have been going up so high and every student knows that. So we need to freeze it and also we are taking off the provincial portion of the interest. But one more thing I would say is that we cannot continue to blame the previous government. Liberals have been in power eight years. And it's, it's about how many years do they need to bring a change. The conservatives were in power eight years too. Okay. And so we need to make sure that you know the government that, that comes is not blaming external circumstances and takes action. Do right. you have a question for the candidate? Well, yes, um, Dale. I just wanted to say that contrary to what I'm hearing from these political attacks, I think our health care system is better than it's been in my lifetime. And our education system as well. So most of what they're saying is mostly political jargon. Um, but I am concerned about um, these 200,000 so-called apprenticeship jobs that the Conservatives say they're going to create, because what they're doing is replacing full-time workers 
with low wa low wage apprentice workers and in the trades there's no need in Ontario for 200,000 more tradesmen so what that's going to do is force full-time workers out of their jobs and put these low wage workers in who will not get permanent work because there's no room for these 200,000 and secondly um, my real concern that I want the Conservatives to come clean about is this 14 billion dollars because I looked at their platform and I looked at the numbers and this 14 billion I believe contrary to what they're saying they're going to cut education and they're going to cut health care again they don't want to tell us that but Mr. Hudak was handpicked by Mike Harris to be the new leader and Mike Harris wouldn't pick somebody who didn't All right, agree we're, we're ring way off the question sector here aren't we but I think I get your questions it's twofold. I'll try to get them both in. Mark, thank that. That's Balkosin. Well, well Dale, I, I guess there's there's no perfect figure because the skilled trades industry is a licensed, certified uh, field. Uh, our government has been working with the community colleges, and we have created an additional 120,000 skilled people in the last couple of years. What has to be done... Through um, apprentice programs, the same as what the... PCs are talking about. Is that well, we've done pre-apprentice and apprentice. Okay. But what really has to be done is there has to be dialogue with the skilled trades industry, and our government has, has implemented a task force that is doing that right now. We also have a fairness commission that is working with most of the skilled trades uh, association because what we need to do is find that balance in the industry as to All what right. is the appropriate number every year. So you're not sure that isn't, if we're talking 200,000, for example, you're not sure that is an appropriate number. You, is that you your wouldn't point? know until you actually look at the economy and what would be the demand for the next four years and then you create okay. those opportunities and you would have to look at the tradespeople that are in the business that will be retiring. Right. Nathan Shan, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I'm not, uh, again, I wouldn't know whether that's an appropriate number or not, but I for sure know that there's enough uh, young people who need to be given that opportunity to do uh, various, you know, many of the young people who are racialized in, in, in marginalized neighborhoods needs to be exposed to trades to apprenticeship program. Yeah. So if the PC were to do it, uh, the, definitely the fear is uh, well-founded that it might eliminate full-time jobs and make it temporary, but NDP's program or on apprenticeship program and supporting apprenticeship program would be done in a way that it actually empowers the sector and provides uh, the, you know, uh, skilled workers to f fulfill... But you're not putting a number on it. You're not putting a number on it. And okay. our, we have always been uh, upfront about supporting young people and getting involved in an yeah. apprenticeship program because we need to diversify the options available for our young people so okay. that they can actually make money when they graduate. All right.